Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make these cute candy corn paper beads and it's super easy. So let's get right to it. We're going to need some paper. We're going to need um, a skewer to make our bead on or a toothpick, whatever you have. And um, we're also going to need some basic jewelry tools, which I will go over um, in a minute. And if you want your beads to be glossy like this, you're going to need clear embossing ink and um, embossing powder, clear embossing powder. You can find both of those any store at any store that sells stamping supplies. So first thing you're going to do is you are going to get some paper. I'm using cardstock, but regular paper is fine. Um, I've got one piece of cardstock that's white and it measures about an inch on the wide end and it tapers down to a half an inch. Then I have a yellow paper. It starts at about a half an inch wide. Mine's a little skinny, but you want it to start at about a half an inch, the same as the, um, the ending spot there and it tapers down to about a quarter of an inch and then I've got this orange one that's about a quarter of an inch down to an eighth of an inch or it could go down to like a tiny little peak that's totally fine so we're going to be rolling them up kind of like that so you want to grab your skewer and to make your paper bend easily just kind of run your finger across it be careful not to get a paper cut and um, just roll it right on up I'm going to roll this right up and don't worry if it gets kind of um, not lined up as you're going because we can adjust that. Just You just want to roll it up. Cardstock can be a little difficult to roll up because it's so, th so thick so if you want to do regular paper you can. If you're using thinner paper you're going to end up with a skinnier bead so you might need a longer piece um, to make up for that but um, but it's totally fine. So see mine is really out of out of whack right now so what I'm going to do is just kind of pull it off the off the stick and, and uh, squash it and I'm going to give the end a tug and that's going to compress the coils and I'm going to roll it back up and just flatten it down with my finger and get that nice kind of tip of the uh, of the candy corn look there so you get kind of like a little um, just a little pointy up one bead and then I'm using some glue and this is a um, little fine tip applicator from Tilly's Bridge just go to zipit.com and search Tilly's Bridge she's actually a, uh, a fan here and she sent me these bottles and they work fantastic um, you can put any glue in there and I've got Mod Podge in mine so after you've held that just for a second, the glue grabs really quick. You could also use Elmer's glue or whatever white glue you like. I'm going to add a little glue there. And I am going to add my next strip, which is the yellow, because if you look at a piece of candy corn, it's yellow next. And I just, you know, want to make sure that holds on there real well. But as soon as you get a couple wraps around, it's going to be fine. Now I'm not using the um, skewer anymore because I find it's a little bit easier just to do it with my fingers. And just you want to wrap up your yellow strip, trying to keep it lined up at the bottom. But again, if it goes off, you can adjust it. Not a big deal. That's why I only do a dab of glue when I start the paper because I don't want I want to be able to adjust it if it goes uh, if it goes off. Now this should have a little bit more of a taper than it does to have that smooth look, but the embossing powder will help fill in any um, any not so smooth bits later. So don't worry about that. Okay, now for cutting my strips, I use my paper cutter so I can do a bunch at once, but using a rotary cutter and a, uh, a plastic ruler um, also works really well, but use whatever you want. I recommend making up a bunch of beads and then matching them up with ones they, they came out similar to um, when I make earrings, so that's just, a, it's great. It's also fun if you're, you know, do craft fairs and you have some ones coming up before Thanksgiving. It's a great, uh, great fall time craft. Just rolling up this last piece here. And then we're going to do another little dab of glue here at the end of this strip. And then one other thing I like to do to protect the bead a little bit more and keep it from shifting is on the end here, I just go ahead and I fill this right up with my glue. Okay, I don't do the inside of the bead just because I'm afraid I would close the hole up by mistake, but I do seal up all these ends. And then for drying, I set them in this my homemade drying board, which is a couple sheets of foam core that I've glued together, and then I stuck a bunch of sewing pins in, and it's just perfect for uh, setting things on, like that I've painted that I'm drying, or for holding beads while they're drying. All right, so I've got some beads I've already finished making. So I'm going to take one, and I am going to show you how to glaze it. Let's see, I want to find one that matches this one because I've already glazed that one. So those two are pretty close. They'll all be pretty close, but I just try to take the ones that match the most. And I am going to put this on my skewer. Now I've already glazed some, so I've got kind of like a little ball of embossing powder there. So I'm going to slide that right down to that because that way it's not going to fall. And I find it's a little easier to have the flat part of the bead down for some reason. It keeps it... It, uh, it seems to help it work a lot better. And so I'm getting open up my embossing powder so that's ready to go. I've got my heat gun here because you're going to need your heat gun. 
and this clear ink but you can also use vegetable glycerin if you have that if you don't have a clear ink pad and you can find the clear ink and the embossing powder and the heat gun anywhere that sells stamping supplies um, AC Moore, Joann's, all those places would have it so then what I'm going to do I've put the ink on and the ink makes the beads sticky and then I can roll it in this embossing powder and um, it's going to stick so you see it kind of looks like it's sugar but it's not sugar it's embossing powder I had a lot of people ask me about that the last time I did a, a glazed bead video now I'm going to leave the camera rolling as I do this because people were confused the last time I did this as to how long it took to melt so I apologize for the uh, the noise but I just wanted to make sure that you could see exactly how long it took so you weren't um, frustrated if it didn't melt as quickly as you thought so now when you can start to see the powder go away and you kind, of, you kind of looks like raindrops or dewdrops on it you know you've melted that first layer and you want to dip it back in the powder now if you let it dry too uh, cool too much and no powder sticks then you can roll it on your ink pad again I'm usually quick enough that I can just keep dipping it into the um, into the jar of embossing powder so the second coat's gonna melt a lot quicker each coat melts quicker because the previous layer is still a little warm okay I'm gonna go in there again my I need to open up a new jar you could seriously go through this pretty fast when you uh, start making beads you can see this layers uh, melting even quicker you want to make sure you turn your bead as you go so that it melts evenly and you don't end up with a big glob of um, of, uh, of the powder anywhere and another important thing is to make sure that your glue is dry before you do this otherwise the moisture in there is going to um, collect and make bubbles and sometimes turn your embossing powder white just because that moisture trapped in there is not um, is not ideal so I let my beads dry overnight and then I go in and do the glazing step so I noticed a lot of people had problems with that too so now that it's starting to really melt and get a thick coating I'm holding it at an angle so it can kind of drip down and make sure that the top of the bead is covered oh did you see that a bunch of uh, powder flew right off of there so I'm getting it so thick that it can almost not hold all of that so I want to pull my gun a little bit further away and I just I'm kind of using the heat in the air to kind of press it push the uh, the powder along to make sure it coats everything evenly and now I've got to let this um, I'm gonna kind of twirl it until I'm sure it's dry or at least fairly cool and then I'm gonna lean it up against a can I'm just gonna kind of lean it up against something so it doesn't tip over so that it can finish cooling the rest of the way when you're done with your embossing powder and your your ink pad make sure you cap both of them up so they'll give you lots of use in the future you don't want your pad drying out you don't want this spilling and you don't want dust and junk to get into this because then it won't look very good on your next projects because all that stuff will be be trapped in there all right oops I forgot to put the little cap on my glue that's not good either because if I do that then I'm gonna have a clogged fine tip applicator all right so this is what it looks like when it is all glazed isn't that pretty all right so now we're gonna need a few basic jewelry making supplies I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see in detail what I'm doing and um, I'm gonna use a head pin that has a bead attached to it if you don't have one of these use a regular head pin and a bead that matches your creation the reason you need a bead on the end is because the hole is pretty big from our skewer so we want to make sure that the head pin doesn't fall through so you put your head pin in and a bead if you need it and I uh, these head pins with the lamp work ends those are from oriental trading by the way so what I'm gonna do is use a pair of three in one pliers this is the first tool you should get if you're thinking about jewelry making because it has the needle nose pliers it has a smushy part for flattening out coils for closing uh, crimps in a pinch and it's got a little um, a little flush cutter there so what you want to do is you want to grab the wire with the tip of the pliers about an eighth of an inch above your bead and you're gonna bend it at a right angle okay so that's what you have now you're gonna use the cutters on this and this these pliers are like four bucks at Walmart so they're not like crazy expensive you're gonna cut the wire about a quarter of an inch from that bend okay so that's what we have there can you see that now you want to grab the tip of that wire between your plier ends okay you don't want any sticking out because sometimes that, those will not look very neat and you'd have to file that down and then you're simply gonna curl it back towards the wire back towards the beads and you have that nice little loop right there and I'm actually gonna bend it back there just to make sure it's nice and centered centered little loop look how neat and tidy and then you're gonna take an ear wire 
and you're gonna look here at the bottom of the ear wires. It looks like a fishing hook, you see that? So on the end, you're gonna notice that one side, you're gonna find the end of that wire. Now on the end part, you just wanna twist it up and you make and it makes a little gap. You never wanna open it up like a U, you just wanna twist it so you have just a little space in there. I think you can probably see that, hopefully. See that, there's a little space. And I'm gonna just slide that right on there and close it up just by twisting it closed, nothing fancy, and there is our finished earring. So you could do like a witch's hat, you can do Christmas trees, you could do lobster buoys, you can do anything that's got that cone shape, and I think it's totally fun. And uh, here's a couple pairs that I've already finished. And uh, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I will put links to other paper bead tutorials that I've done that I think you might enjoy. And I wanna thank you so much for watching. Please share this on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere where um, the, your friends hang out that love making cool jewelry and paper bead things. I would love the shares, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.